Well, hello and welcome. Do you want to learn what is GraphQL? Do you want to understand the differences between GraphQL and REST? If yes, this tutorial is absolutely for you. So let's first try to understand what is GraphQL. GraphQL acts as a query language for your API. Uh, you can compare it with structured query language with SQL in short. So SQL is a query language for our databases. We have tons of tables, databases, and we are querying to retrieve, uh, retrieve the information we want from the database. But from the GraphQL perspective, the source is actually API itself. So we want to get different attributes from the same endpoint. We want to get uh, different variations of the same API and GraphQL helps us to do this process. So GraphQL is currently the most popular approach for the API development, especially for the uh, mobile oriented development process. Actually, we're using REST for the desktop processes, desktop oriented APIs. For the mobile oriented APIs, we are actively using the GraphQL one. GraphQL takes us out of the situation where REST is ineffective. So uh, in this tutorial, we will absolutely focus that you are going to learn or you already know, but you want to to clarify what is the differences between GraphQL and REST and you want to use GraphQL in your further development processes and we will mention uh, all the advantages of GraphQL. So let's start with the differences uh, of GraphQL and REST API. First of all, REST API is intended mostly for the desktop devices. It means when you are doing the desktop oriented API development process and you need all these the attributes you want from the API, you are free to go with the REST API. But if you want to reduce overfetching and underfetching processes, you should use GraphQL. It means when you have one single endpoint, but uh, you need, for example, in, in your in endpoint, you have 10 attributes uh, in this. In some cases, you need five of them. In another case, you need three of them. You should select GraphQL. So let's go with some examples. So I've prepared some Postman collection for you. And in this case, I have two collections. One of them is REST-based collections and the other one is actually the GraphQL one. So let's go with the REST one. So this is a simple API to retrieve the information related to the user. So this is just get endpoint and I'm sending the request to get the response. So as you realized, I have multiple information. I have tons of attributes here and um, this is completely okay when you are doing the desktop development. But when you are doing mobile oriented API development, you actually don't need in most cases all these attributes. For example, in some cases you need five of them in other case you need i don't know 15 of them but in a few cases you actually need all this information so uh using rest api unfortunately it is not possible to provide dynamic values to the a user side so in this case you should go with GraphQL. So let's go with GraphQL. I, in my collection, I have some endpoint here. This is actually the user creation endpoint. Uh, GraphQL uses mutations, actually create the data, update the data or delete it. For the retrieving the information, GraphQL uses uh, queries. So let's say I'm creating a user here. For the user, I am providing to roll with a 33 years old. So um, in this case, from the API, I also want to get name, age and ID. So let's query. So the response here, we have name, age and ID. But what if I want to retrieve only name and ID? I want to avoid getting age. It is completely easy to do it using GraphQL. So you're sending query and you're receiving only name and ID with mutation operation. Okay. So uh, as you understand, it's very easy to do dynamic manipulation to the API rather than using the static REST endpoint itself. Cool. So uh, let's go with 
the other uh, differences between GraphQL and REST. So REST is resource-oriented design. REST is actually uh, has a resource-oriented architecture. It means when you need to grab information from multiple resources, you should do multiple queries. But from the GraphQL perspective, there is no resources. There is only one single resource and you can avoid multiple requesting process. You can avoid multiple endpoints actually using GraphQL. So let's go back to our Postman collection. So uh, let's select our second uh, GraphQL endpoint. In my case, this endpoint has a schema. GraphQL works uh, over schema. So when you have a schema, you can easily grab any information, any field you want. And in my case, my endpoint provided this schema and I want to get all the continents information from the source itself. So in my case, I'm going to request to continents and getting code and name. When I query, I actually can get code and name information. But what if I want also the country information related to the continents? It is completely easy. I'm just checking them and doing the same query again. And in this case, GraphQL is able to grab the country information. Problem here is if from the REST perspective, in your case, you have continents and you have countries, you have two resources and to grab all this information to represent all this information together you have already now that service layer you are requesting some data from the countries and other data from the continents and you are merging them and returning to the api layer in general we are doing in this way uh, and in your case you have two requests but from the graphql perspective it was actually one Cool. So uh, REST API is single static data per endpoint. It means when you have endpoint and you have a hundred attributes on it, you should provide all this data to the client side. But in your GraphQL, it is easy to grab any of them. Let's see with our Postman example. I will use the same example, but from the countries, I will reduce some attributes. I just need, let's say, capital from the countries. When I click to query, I'm actually getting all the continents with all the countries, but I'm getting also the only one attribute per country, and it is capital. But when you do this query to your API, actually you can't do this query to your API, but if you want to do something like this, you should do some additional changes to your REST API, you, do some, you should do some versioning stuff, so it is a little bit complicated. Or you can use the same REST API, but from the front-end side you can filter and you can select that I want to see actually these attributes, but this is quite an efficient way of using uh, APIs. Okay, so the next difference is REST API has several resources and it means it has several queries. As we mentioned before, when you have a resource-oriented design, it means when you want to grab one single huge information from different resources, you should actually provide uh, multiple queries, but uh, create some type of mediator to interact with these queries and uh, combine them to the one API. But from the GraphQL perspective, you can actually reduce this type of complex operations. You can reduce a number of requests and you are providing only one single request to retrieve all the information you want. The other difference is REST API, unfortunately, is um, 
frozen design it means uh you, you when you have some changes it means you have some versioning in your api but from the graphical perspective it is easy to change so there is no need to ask backend guides to add some attributes to reduce to remove some attributes from the api you are as a user has a capability to do let's say dynamic modification over your api so graphql provides more management rather than the rest api in this case rest api has a static nature from the GraphQL perspective, it is easily changeable. We already talked about it. So just remember that GraphQL is dynamic, REST is static from the uh, attributes perspective. And when it comes to microservice-oriented development, actually using GraphQL is efficient rather than REST API because in your REST API, let's say in your microservice development, you have multiple services and per service, you have multiple resources. When it comes to combine all these services to create some type of mediator service, uh, GraphQL uh, will help you to reduce multiple service requests. Requests. Uh, and in these multiple services, you will also have additional uh, resource-based queries. Actually, GraphQL, um, in the GraphQL, we have multiple service, but single resource. So GraphQL acts as a wrapper over services to combine them into one big service. And from the user's perspective, it seems like there is no multiple services. There is actually one service to provide all this information. In my case, let's say I have a um, person, GraphQL endpoint, and I have another endpoint like cart data. So I want to combine them into one using Apollo Federation I can or other tools I can easily uh, come create one single huge graphical query to get multiple responses as a one single resource. And of course, we mentioned that GraphQL is front end friendly. Uh, from the GraphQL perspective, there is no resources, there is only one single resource. But from the REST API perspective, it is desktop friendly and there are multiple resources. Actual GraphQL helps you in your development process to do fast iteration. Uh, Frontend works on its own user story without depending on the backend. For example, if you need to um, get one additional attribute from the REST side or uh, reduce it, you're asking backend guides to provide it. You, actually using the mocking stuff, you can uh, uh, work from the isolated, um, but unfortunately in the production, you should be the backend guides to implement all these features to move to the um, production but GraphQL actually reduces amount of user stories related to the already implemented API. Well, I think the last thing is the verbs and operations. GraphQL doesn't have verbs. GraphQL has operations. So when you, uh, when you are doing query, it is actually query. It is similar to REST APIs get, but when you are doing some modifications like data creation, data updating, or data deleting, it is actually going to be a mutation. And GraphQL has ability to subscribe to some event, let's say, and to get the latest information like um, when you have producer uh, consumer and you have a subscription mechanism subscription pattern to subscribe to some event and retrieve data from the um, from the graphql perspective it is actually really easy to implement all these operations well long story short about graphql so graphql helps you to reduce overfishing under fetching one endpoint instead of multiple, one request instead of multiple, flexible data retrieval, avoiding versioning, dynamic changes, front-end and mobile friendly, and of course, 
fast iteration. Depending from your requirement, you should select between REST or GraphQL, but in the last few years, GraphQL is going to be a popular um, API development tool and it is actually really really easy to do all these processes using GraphQL. Well, I think I could explain the differences between GraphQL and REST. We are going to have um, other uh, tutorials related to GraphQL also, but uh, in this tutorial, I try to explain what is GraphQL and the differences uh, between GraphQL and REST API.